Hello, and welcome to St. David's Church, here in Ton Revel with Gilvac Gork. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. It's the start of the new church year. So, hey, happy new year to you. Let's light that first candle of Advent. During the Advent season, we remember and we look forward. We think about Jesus' sacrifice that brings us to repentance and we anticipate his return. In the bustle of the Christmas season, making time to celebrate Advent makes space in our hearts to focus on Jesus. Advent is a word with Latin roots and means coming. This is a special time while we wait for Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, and we light Advent candles to reflect this. The first Sunday of Advent leads our hearts to hope. It is time to ponder the prophecies about the promised Messiah. We begin the season with a mindset that creates hope in our hearts. Our first song today is that moving version by Lauren Daigle of What Else But Light of the World.
All of us are on a journey towards Christmas. For each of us, it will be different. But let's start that journey right now in the presence of God with prayer. Holy God, as we begin this first week of Advent with a heart awakening to hope, you are our signpost lighting our way forward. Darkness may abound, but you reveal light. Night may linger, but hope comes in the morning because of you. May we turn our hearts towards you, filled with hope and light. In Jesus' name, Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, you light up our life when we put our trust in you. That guiding hand of love leads us to where we should be, whatever we may have done wrong. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We've not loved you with all our heart and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We're truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. May God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself, and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us all from our sins and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here is the collect for this week. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness. That we, may be, that we may be ready to meet you. In our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Today we welcome David Morris, who will be reading today's Gospel and guiding us through that Gospel. A reading from the Gospel according to St Luke. There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, Stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. 
for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Today, the Church begins her Advent journey, a period of four Sundays leading us to Christmas. The word Advent derives from the Latin Adventus, meaning coming or arrival. So during this season, we are preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus, his first coming or arrival. And there is a particular focus on the second Advent of Christ, when he will return in glory. During the Advent season, we have particular traditions and customs and practices that encourage us to observe these days intentionally and prayerfully. For example, the lighting of the four Advent candles each Sunday and the opening of Advent calendar doors each day are designed to slow us down and aid our preparation, enabling us to make the most of what is intended to be a period or a season of preparation and penitence. There is then an emphasis on waiting and watchfulness during Advent as we look for the signs of his coming again and the need to prepare adequately for it. In the Gospel reading we just heard from Luke, we are being encouraged to be watchful and to be ready for the Lord's arrival on a day and at an hour that we will not expect. Increasingly, these themes of watchfulness and waiting which characterise Advent in the church tradition find themselves at odds with the advent of the secular world, where hype, busyness and the ever-growing desire to start celebrating Christmas earlier are the more dominant realities. The tension reflected at Advent is one which is prevalent in society more broadly and in our personal lives too where we are often encouraged to look after our well-being and maintain a healthy work-life balance. And yet the pace of life and the demands of work continue to apply pressure for us. I don't know about you, but the lead up to Christmas this year is looking increasingly more typical for me with a fuller diary compared to last year, which was for many of us one of the most surreal Christmases due to COVID-19 restrictions. But yet, one of the consequences for some of us was a seemingly far less frantic and intense build up to Christmas. The pandemic has taught us many valuable lessons, but one of them is that we don't always need to go 100 miles an hour through life. And I was hoping that emerging from the pandemic, I wouldn't get back into the same old routines that often result in stress or burnout for some. Old habits die hard, but seasons like Advent serve as a continual reminder to us of the need to prioritise what is most important in life and to live in the present moment. As Advent marks the beginning of a new church year, so too it marks the beginning of a new cycle of scripture readings. Today we begin year C of the three-year cycle of Sunday readings, also known as the three-year lectionary. As we move through year C, we will particularly explore the Gospel according to Luke. During Advent, the readings appointed for the season also enhance the intention of the season. The readings will have been chosen to direct our thoughts, and we reflect on those three principal themes, the fulfilment of prophecy, the mystery of the incarnation, and the parousia, that is, the second coming or the return of Jesus. Gregory the Great, commenting on the gospel passage we have today in his homilies in the 6th century, was eager to warn the church to be watchful for the fulfilment of God's promises when he said this, Give hard thought to that day, dearly beloved. Amend your lives, change your habits, resist and overcome your evil temptations. So mindful of Gregory's warning and having considered the purpose of this holy season, let us make the most of it. Hopefully we will use it as a time for self-examination and preparation, and maybe to ask ourselves the question, how ready are we for Christmas? That is to celebrate the birth of Christ and not whether we've got all our presents sorted. And also to ask ourselves, 
How ready are we for his return? Let us use this season to grow in holiness, which will in part enable and encourage us to keep a holy, lifelong Advent season, one in which we will, we will be constantly found watchful and waiting. And so be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Shall we say together the baptismal creed? Do you believe in God the Father, the creator of all? I believe and trust in God the Father. Do you believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world? I believe and trust in God the Son. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? I believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now David will lead us in prayer today. Advent is that time of longing, hoping and waiting that our culture finds so hard to understand. Ours is a world of instant satisfactions. It's the more important, therefore, that Christians shouldn't compromise the rich themes of Advent by letting Christmas take over too soon. The response to the words your kingdom come is your will be done. Holy God, ever with us and ever on your way towards us, we look to you this Advent, willing your kingdom to come, but knowing it's not ours to take. So come to us in the many guises of love, meet our longing, enter our waiting, give life to our hoping. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, hope of the hopeless, you alone give us reason to go on. Give hope to those who this day all over the world are hungry for basic gifts. Food to stop the children aching with hunger. A home to put pictures on the wall. Education to open the door to a job. Justice to give everyone a chance. We particularly pray for those places at war, famine, and with injustice. God of hope, give hope to the hopeless. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, love of the loveless, you are the one that never fails to love to the limit. You love without question the loveless, the unlovely and the unlovable. May we do the same. We're aware of people or groups of people whom we instinctively reject because of what they've done to us or what they represent to us. We identify them in our hearts right now. Give us strength to love, give them strength to respond, and give us the gentleness to love ourselves as well. God of love, give love to the loveless. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, joy of the joyless, you are the source of inexhaustible delight. In a world of desperate pleasure and stale smiles, Take us to the place where true joys are to be found. We pray for those who face Christmas and the New Year with deep apprehension, knowing it to be a time where much true poverty is revealed. Poverty of love, of friends, of perfect purpose, of spirit. In silence, we pray for particular families, including even our own.
your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, God of those who think themselves godless, you are the rock on which our lives are built. Have mercy on those who try to live without you and lead them gently to the truth that sets us free. Come afresh to their minds of those who think they've sought their way out of your reach. Come afresh too to those of us who think we have it all taped, for whom your mystery and power have become dulled and routine. Come afresh to the hearts of us all, whether they be full of distractions or swept clean and empty. We long for you to be central to our lives and central to the life of the world. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Holy God, this Advent we set ourselves to longing again, longing and waiting and hoping. We long for your kingdom to come and for this world to be transformed, for it to be on earth as it is in heaven. But the glimmerings of the new world have also to become real in us. So come, our Advent God, with the promise of a new birth in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And shall we say together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. This is what's happening this week. Our on-site services are at all the usual times. If you're local to us, why not come and join us? Evening prayer is on Zoom on a Sunday and a Wednesday evenings at 6.30pm. As always, if you need a link, just contact us. And please do click subscribe if you haven't already. Do you know of anyone who may enjoy joining our virtual parish? If so, tell them where to find us online. And please keep sending in your hymn and song suggestions. This is our time to worship together and your input is so important. Let's say the grace together. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I need to say a big thank you to all who have helped in making this service today. David Morris, Rob, Charmaine, June and David. And all of us on the team would like to thank you for joining us. And as always, you are in our prayers. We finish today with that powerful hymn, Tell Out My Soul. Goodbye.